Hello, everyone. Welcome to Zobrio University's webinar on MIP reporting annual vendor payments. Today, we have Kathy Dwyer, a senior application consultant here at Zobrio, to lead the webinar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat, which is located at the bottom of your screen, and we will go over all questions at the end. I'm going to hand it over to Kathy. Excellent. Thank you, Colleen. Um, as, as Colleen mentioned, my name's Kathy. I work out of our Boston office. Um, and what we have up on the screen right now is um, the classic MIP fund accounting. And what our goal is today is just to take a, a brief look at some of the abilities in MIP to pull off some vendor summary reports. And um, depending on where you're located, you might have a requirement where um, you need to provide a list of uh, vendors that have been paid over a specific dollar amount or maybe between a specific dollar amount. And the idea is, well, how can MIP help me produce that type of report? So um, as we get started, what, what it is is um, we certainly will go in under reports. And excuse me, I have a drop down right in the way. Uh, reports. And if we come down to the accounts payable category of reports, um, this basically all the way down to where it is, says vendor activity. Um, this is where we'll find um, a variety of reports, which um, as I hit the drop down here in the report name, uh, we all know that reports names that are encompassed within those pointy brackets, those are basically report templates that get installed with the software and um, those reports can be copied out and modified um, to, to basically do or accomplish whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish. And what I have on file here is this, this particular report called APIF report. Um, it, it's basically an acronym that we use here in Massachusetts. And for a number of years, um, there's been a requirement whereby um, at the end of a fiscal year, which you'll see here on the, the setup tab, the date range there is our fiscal year runs between uh, July 1st and June 30th. But um, what the requirement basically is, is the ability to produce a report uh, of vendors paid over a specific dollar amount for um, a particular fiscal year. So what we did is we developed this report um, and likewise, you can do the same, again, whether you uh, take a template and, and copy it out, which is copying a template could be as simple as um, something like this. In the upper left, you have the copy and save icon. And, and basically what happens here is when you click on that icon, if we say copy, we can pick any one of these, if you will, canned reports and copy it out. And I'll give you an example. I'll just pick that one and, and give it my name. And we're copying as opposed to renaming. And if we say OK there, um, what ends up happening is uh, we've established a new report based on a template. And because it's a new report, we can go ahead and make edits to it and save it in any way we see fit. So really what happens is with this APIF report, and again, name it whatever makes sense to you, is you establish the date range here um, for the time frame that you want to extract the data from. Okay. And then over here on the contents tab, um, as we know, the upper half of the screen represents where you would like to see a page break. And the lower half of the report is the columns that will appear on the report. And in this instance, what I've done is I've, I've picked three, which I'll refer to as data items, but they basically are establishing three columns on the report. And um, really what you do is you, you pick a, a data item on the left and you use your arrow to move it to the right to include it as a column or if I want to extract it from the report, I select it on the right and move it back to the left. But what's, what's happening here on this particular report is I'm interested in vendors that have been paid more than $4,999.99 for a fiscal year. And what I'm asking for is the vendor ID, 
um, it could be the pay um, the payee name or it could be the vendor name. Either way, in payments, um, uh, basically sorting this in ascending order by the vendor ID. Um, we've got an alphanumeric vendor ID here. Um, I haven't asked for any particular total by vendor. And the reason for that is, is um, we'll see up on our options tab, um, which let me go ahead and click on it, is on the options tab by clicking on the summarize amounts box. What that does is, is and, um, because I haven't selected any data items for things like effective date or document numbers, document descriptions, what it's simply going to do is come back and summarize or give us a grand total of the total amount of payments made to this vendor for the particular date range established on the setup tab. Okay. The more data items that I select for columns, the more detailed the report will be. And if, if we go ahead and do that, then we probably would want to put a check mark to show the total. But our approach here on, on this particular report is summary in nature. And as we know, um, we can basically, the system will come back with a report total. Um, we do specify the width, if you will, of each column just to, for presentation to make it look nice. And whether repeats, you know, in, in this case, it's, it's really not valid because if we're picking a vendor once and we're summarizing, you're really not going to see a vendor listed more than once on the report. Okay. Now, what we've done here is let, let me leave off the content tab and come on over to the filter tab. Okay. This is the key component is there is, uh, if you look in the upper right hand side, there is a data item called total paid. Okay. So I'm not really interested in, in single invoices being greater than uh, let's say the 4,999. I want to know in total how much we've paid to this vendor um, and only show me vendors that in total have been paid in excess of the 4,999. So we're selecting total paid as a data item as opposed to perhaps um, in another one of these amount fields that I'm scrolling up and down and looking for. But definitely go with your total paid. Um, in this case, I use the action item or the fil filter greater than as opposed to equal or between, but you certainly can use any one of these qualifiers to control the uh, data that you see on the report. Um, I also do, as a habit, come, um, pick a second filter called check-in voucher number and telling it not equal to blank. And that's not always entirely necessary, but to be honest with you, I've run some reports where the system comes back with amounts where um, the check and voucher is blank, um, and it's almost like it's a credit memo or maybe some type of uh, entry, like a, a write checks or whatnot, and a different function of entering the data in the system, something other than a computer-generated check. And it comes back, but it, it doesn't really provide uh, information, um, enough information to identify the transaction. So I tend to tell it if you, if you got a blank check number um, or voucher number, if you if you make payments through EFTs, if it's blank, don't include it on the report. Keep it nice and clean. Okay. Um, the grouping option, not really an option on this report. You know, when, when we don't need to use a grouping methodology other than vendor. Um, the groups really work off the segments that make up your chart of accounts. Okay. Um, our options tab, as we mentioned earlier, we're summarizing because we want to see overall total purchases. Okay. And as we know with the layout tab, oftentimes, um, we, we, to be honest with you, I, I very rarely, if ever, change the font, which is at the top uh, half of this, this page and the font set up to the right. I, I've been known, of course, to use the page setup button on the lower right, which would um, twist a report around mostly from um, portrait to landscape. And you can control that through these radio buttons, and you can tr uh, control margin sizes, which really makes the data, the more columns you select, the more, the more difficult it is to get a nicely formatted report. But this, is, this assists you as far as 
course, turning it from portrait to landscape gives us more um, layout, if you will, or more room on the report in compressing these default margin sizes from maybe 0.75 to 0.25 gives you more real estate on the report. Okay. And then as we know, the security tab, basically if you establish a report and you're happy to let others run it, but you prefer they don't make any changes, a click here basically locks down that report and the only one that could change it would be the author, which would be like you or I. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and run this report. I'm going to just print it to screen because it, it, it comes up a little bit better for clarity. Okay. And what I want to point out to you here is, is we are, as you can see, we got the vendor ID, we got the payee, and we got the payments. Okay. And the payments are coming up as a negative number. And if I scoot all the way down to the bottom with our last page icon, you can see we get a transaction total and a report total being one and the same. But I'm not really fond of the fact that the numbers, the payments are showing as negatives. Okay. Um, and, and what we can do about that is something like this is your data items that you can columnize, uh, you, you have, and let me see if I can find them quickly. Um, not only do you have payments, but you have expenses and charges. And just briefly, payments means a check or an EFT has been cut. Um, expense is really just um, you've, you've entered in the invoices, but you haven't, you haven't paid them yet. Okay, so we really don't want expenses. We don't really, I don't believe, want charges, which would be like partial payments and what's left to be paid. It's really, if we're looking for what's been physically cut in a check or released in an EFT, we want the payments. Okay, but what we don't like about the payments is it's a little ugly. It's, it comes up negative, and certainly you could export it to Excel and use Excel functions to turn the sign around. But let me, let me show you this little um, icon that's available or this custom function that's available in several of the reports throughout MIP. And it's, it's basically this, uh, towards the end, uh, um, this FX icon. And what that does is it allows us to add a custom field to a report. And that custom field could be based on a formula or it could be based on a date override. And let, let me show you what I've established out here. Is I, I did create one called BAL. I guess I was thinking balance, but you can name it anything you want. And just to kind of give you a flavor for what this does is um, I'm going to make this user-defined field or custom column creation uh, based on a formula. And when I hit that radio button formula, I can go up to the tab that says formula editor and what you'll see is, is in the orange to the right is I've basically said I'm going to take my payments and then I'm going to multiply it times a value of negative one, okay, which will turn the sign from negative to plus. You can create that. You can save that data item. And then what happens is, is in the back to the content tab on the lower left, um, it adds my BAL or custom field as a selectable items item. I'm going to sec, uh, select that and move it to the right. And I'm going to use leaf payments out there just to kind of show you. Um, let's go ahead and print to screen. Okay. And now what you'll see is we've the payments column remains negative, but we now have the balance column that's turned around and, and is reporting a positive number. If we scoot to the bottom of that report, we can see that the, the numbers are the same. It's just the sign has been reversed. Okay. So that's, that's just one way of, of using one of these custom fields. And certainly you can come back over here and say, now that I've done that, uh, remove the payments, display it up on the screen, and now we have a nice report by vendor. And as you can see here, it, it is sorted alphabetically by the vendor ID. Um, you can see all the, the balances that are there. Or is anybody that's been paid, I believe, over the 4999 which, again, was back here on our filter tab, and we've got total paid greater than the 4999 
what you can do, and again, of course, is when you get the report, whether you bring it up on the screen and then export it, but you certainly can uh, run that report. You can export it to Excel. You can export it to a PDF, um, and, and now you have uh, an electronic form, if you will, other than just a printed copy. If you happen to want to look at this, like maybe perhaps we look at, I'll, I'll take AP exams, and what do we got there, 9,000, no, I guess that, reading across it, um, looks like 9,107. If you look at that and you question, like, hmm, is that really correct? Always keep in mind under the vendor system, you can go to activities, you can go down to accounts payable, um, you can go to display vendor balances, and what happens here is if we go ahead and select the vendor, and we'll get that uh, AP exams, and if you set your lookup to check so that um, we don't need to see the invoices, the check equates to the payments, and we set our date range equivalent to what the report was run for, and we display that information, there's that same 9,107, and what this will allow you to do is if, if you're questioning a value, hit the plus sign and it will drill in. And in this instance, we have a single invoice that was paid out, and API is the um, invoice, APS is the check. And you can keep drilling in, and the system will show you the details of what was paid and things like the effective date, if I scroll over, um, entry types, and, and different dates and the detail behind that payment. So that's one way that you can use the inquiry to support the report if you're questioning the information. Okay. So more or less, that's, that's what we wanted to show you today. It's, again, the, the big thing here is the filter being that total paid is what will allow you to produce this vendor, uh, annual vendor payments report. Um, so, so let me open the floor. Does anybody have any questions um, that we might ask, questions to ask or concerns or anything? Okay. Well, um, y if you do have any questions and you want to follow up, um, certainly feel free to send me an email. Um, we, we can talk privately or whatnot, but I do appreciate you t attending the class and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. A recording of the webinar will be made available shortly.